Father, you are indeed a faithful God. You are faithful to your own word. You are faithful to your design for salvation that is found in your Son and only in your Son. I pray, Father, as we look to your Son now, as we remember him, uh, that you would accomplish your purpose in this time. You would be pleased with us as we remember your Son. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, now we've come to the point in our service where we remember Christ. We take some time to remember who he is and what it is that he has done. And to do that, we're going to be using a passage that helps us understand the completeness of the work of Jesus on behalf of everybody who would trust in him. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to John chapter 19? We're going to be looking at verses 28 through 30 together. The setting here is that Jesus is on the cross. It's towards the end of the crucifixion, and Jesus is very near to the end of his life. As we read our passage, I'd like to ask you to just take note of all the things that point to the completeness of what it was that Christ performed when he was on the cross. So let's read verses 28 through 30 together. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished, to fulfill the scripture said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John shows us something that's very important for us to see at the beginning of verse 28. And that is that Jesus knew that all things had already been accomplished. Jesus knew that he had completed a task. And the task that he had completed was the task of satisfying his father's wrath against all people who had looked to him throughout all history as their savior and their Lord. Jesus understood that he had done everything that was necessary to satisfy his father's wrath against all of those people. Jesus shows us some things in verse 30 that help us understand his confidence in that. The first is that Jesus says in the middle of the verse, it is finished. Jesus makes a declaration that it is finished. And what was finished was the task of what Jesus did in verse 30, or verse 28, and that is to satisfy the Father's wrath against everybody who would believe in him. Jesus was saying, there is nothing else that sinful man must do, there is nothing else that sinful man can do to reconcile himself to a holy God. Sinful man can only look away from himself to the person of Jesus and look at what Jesus himself has done. And at the very end of verse 30, we see something else that Jesus did that indicates this completeness of his work, and that is that Jesus gave up his spirit. This is a very active process. It's not a passive process at all. In Matthew's gospel account, when he records the crucifixion, Matthew says that Jesus yielded up his spirit. And Mark and Luke say that Jesus breathed his last. This was a very active process. This was not a passive process. It was not the case that, that death overtook Jesus or that Jesus was overcome by death or that he succumbed to death in any way. What happened here was that Jesus was actively entering into death. And the reason why he was actively entering into death was so that he could conquer death. And he could conquer the sin that was the cause of that death. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, he says that just as Jesus was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too now have the ability to walk in newness of life. This is really good. Jesus was so confident of what he did to purchase salvation that he made provision for sanctification of those that he had just saved. Isn't that good news for the believer? That we have the ability to put on display and walk in a manner such that we can actually demonstrate the good work that Jesus did to save us so long ago. And that's really encouraging for the believer today. We can actually walk in newness of life because of what Christ did when he entered into death and then he conquered death by being raised from the dead. So this morning, this is something to celebrate for the believer. The believer can celebrate what Christ did and what he accomplished at the cross on their behalf. So believer, when the elements come to you, take them and hold them and remember the work that Jesus did, that he was absolutely certain, he was absolutely confident of the things that he had done to reconcile sinful man to a holy God. Remember what God has done for you through the person of Jesus Christ, and when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. 
If you're here today and Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Master, we want to encourage you with a couple of things. First, I want to just thank you for visiting with us this morning. You're very welcome for being here. We hope that you enjoy your time of worship. I want you to understand that God has one and only one design whereby sinful man can be reconciled to him. And that is by looking away from themselves and looking to the person of Jesus at the cross and what he did to satisfy the Father's wrath against them for their sin and the offense that it is against him. So when the elements come along, for all of those who are believers, take them and observe and take them on your own. And when everybody's done, I will come and close our time in prayer. Thank you.